My name is Dennis Kleben, and today I'm going to talk about uh, our PyTest revolution. Um, for uh, this presentation, I'm going to focus on the problems uh, with our existing tests that we had. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the things we did to resolve those problems. I'm going to kind of give an update on where we stand with all of our tests now, and then I'm going to address what is uh, coming up next in this PyTest revolution. So the problems that uh, we had were numerous. Um, the first one um, was the dependence on external services. Uh, Pulp is used to sync content from web servers out there. So it made sense for us to use fixtures that were hosted on external servers to uh, sync from during our tests. However, um, over time, we definitely noticed uh, that network connection problems that just you know happen in everyday life. Uh, would give us, you know, false uh, failures and all sorts of different problems. Um, another problem that we had was the fact that we reused the same fixtures. And uh, that meant that uh, our test pretty much had to be run serially because of that. Um, Pulp handles uh, files that it had seen before and new files very differently. And in order to exercise all the code paths, we need to be able to present Pulp with new content to sync and existing content to sync to test you know, how it handles existing content. And because the content was getting reused between tests, not only couldn't we run those tests in parallel, we also had to run orphan cleanup between the tests, which is an extra task that has to run and add time to the whole duration of uh, the test run. Uh, and there was actually some test interdependence. Because we always ran tests you know, serially, uh, we inadvertently, even though we, we actually made a big effort to avoid having test interdependence, it still occurred because you'd be working on a test, you'd be adding it and running it together with the rest of the test module or something, and you would just create this interdependence. Uh, not necessarily on purpose always, but the test interdependence definitely happened. And once again, that meant that you couldn't run the tests in parallel, but also, Sometimes you'd be working on something and you'd want to just run that one test and you couldn't really do it because running it without running some other previous tests would produce an incorrect um, state in the system. And so the test would fail. And we also had a lot of duplicated code. Um, the, our tests uh, would have to do all sorts of setup, like configuring API clients to talk to Pulp API, uh, or creating repositories and creating remotes. And all of this code would be just duplicated in all the test setup that we had. And another big problem that we had was the fact that it was just, in general, hard to run the tests anywhere outside our CI or the dev environment. And this is a challenge for uh, other teams that uh, both in Red Hat and outside of Red Hat that want to, uh, for example, build RPM packages out of Pulp. And then they want to uh, verify that those packages are working correctly. Um, and right now, uh, before any changes to our tests, the tests that we provided could not really be run against those packages. And so, uh, they were pretty much unusable uh, outside of our team. So what did we do to address these problems? Um, we uh, decided to build some fixtures using the PyTest framework. 
Uh, we were already using PyTest as a test runner, uh, but using it as a test runner was not really providing us much benefit because uh, our tests were running serially and they were still they still had all the problems that I described earlier. So to resolve uh, those problems, we created some fixtures. Um, these fixtures, uh, the, I'll, let's uh, go over some of these fixtures. The first one uh, that I believe Brian added was a web server fixture, which means that uh, now when you have a test, depending on this server fixture, PyTest actually spins up a thread uh, that serves up a web server with whatever files you tell that fixture to serve up. That meant that these tests that sync content from an external server can now just sync it from this little web server that's being served up by, by PyTest. Then in order to make this uh, web server even more awesome, we added a uh, a PyTest fixture that could generate random files. Uh, and uh, this meant that for each test, we could have a whole new set of fixtures, uh, content fixtures. So that mean, meant that now the tests that couldn't be run in parallel because they were relying on the same content could be run in parallel because all the content every time that you run the test is actually randomly generated and being, is being served up by the web server fixture. Um, another set of fixtures that we created were for configuring all the API clients. And this led to a big reduction in uh, boilerplate code that the tests have to have in order to configure the clients to talk to the Pulp API. Um, and we actually even have a, we have a PR open right now to make those clients have be session scoped. Uh, what's nice about PyTest fixtures is that you can have different scopes for different fixtures, and for fixtures that um, need to be unique for every test, they are scoped to the test and they are created for every test. But for some fixtures, it's okay to create one instance of it and just reuse it throughout. And for client libraries. Uh, for clients, uh, it makes sense to make them session scope and make them reuse and just uh, not have to do that with every test. And so we're going back to that. Um, and another uh, fixture, uh, that set of fixtures that has helped reduce the amount of code that we have are these uh, resource factories that we've created that help you create remotes. The, and these remotes are actually, are aware of the web server fixtures. So when you ask this factory to produce you a remote, it comes back and it's already configured to sync from the web server that you've created for your test. And the same uh, thing for repositories. Uh, we have factories to create however many repositories you need for your tests. Um, and you, instead of having to have m many lines of code to do that, you can just have like, one line of code for every repository that you need. And so then once we created these fixtures, and really as we were creating these fixtures, we uh, refactored all of the tests in a uh, pulp file to use those fixtures. Um, and so uh, today, we've converted all of the tests that were in pulp file to use PyTest fixtures. Um, that means that, it, that includes all the tests that we actually moved over from pulp core into pulp file because they were all using pulp file. Uh, so it made sense to actually move those tests back into pulp file because uh, it, that helps us address uh, the problem of not having the tests like ship with the actual plugin that they are testing, um, and so we moved those tests back into pulp file, and we've converted them to PyTest. Um, we also converted the pulp core test to use PyTest, and we have two more modules uh, that are remaining, and those modules are are back related, 
And we already have the fixtures needed to convert those. So I believe those will be converted very, very shortly. Um, Paul Debian, uh, a community uh, supported plugin, has actually uh, converted a lot of their tests to use PyTest also. They've been uh, writing all the new tests that they've been writing over the last like three months or so have been using PyTest and they've been converting tests also. So I've um, uh, been very glad to see that um, the value is not seen just by the people here, but also by other developers of Pulp. Uh, and the great thing about this is that most of the tests now run in parallel uh, for Pulp File and Pulp Core, which is really, really great. And they can be run independently. Uh, and I found this to be really useful when I was uh, working on any of the tests because I could just run them over and over again without having to reset the database or do anything funky. And it made the development process uh, much, much quicker. Um, so to give you an example of one of these uh, PRs, uh, this is a PR from Jared to convert the repo versions test. And as you can see here, um, he was able to remove almost 1,200 lines of code, and he only added 646 lines of code. And this is very representative of how other test conversions went. Like, we were able to reduce the amount of code by a whole lot. Um, the other reason I want to show this test is because Jared actually did some comparison to the old tests and new tests. And um, in this very unscientific, like, uh, this is very rough numbers. But he saw that the tests now ran in 120 seconds versus 387 seconds before. Um, this kind of uh, reduction in time was not so dramatic in every case, but there was definitely a reduction in runtime in all of the tests. Um, and so I'll, the claims that I want to make is that we have at least a 20% reduction in runtime. Um, I'm very confident in saying that. Uh, and there's definitely at least a 30% reduction in code, if it's not closer to 50. But I'm very confident to say that it's at least 30% reduction in code. And the test code is so much easier to read because the boilerplate code is just all in one place in the fixtures. The tests are very clear. They state like what is being created and what is being asserted. Um, so I'm very uh, pleased with the results we have so far. So what is next? Um, the effort so far has been a little bit informal. Um, initially, I was trying to convert all of the tests. Um, that was uh, a little bit silly of me to think that I was able to get it. I was going to be able to do it all on my own. Um, eventually, I got help from multiple people on the team. And I'm very grateful to all of you uh, for the help because you made the effort go much, much faster. And uh, now uh, we're going to officially form a working group that's going to fo focus on this effort. And we're going to meet weekly. And we're going to uh, focus on converting the RPM plugin next. So, uh, we're going to finish the Pulp Core plugin, which has very little left in it. And then we're going to focus on the other plugins. Uh, one uh, caveat is that with plugins that rely on live APIs, such as the container plugin and the Ansible plugin, it will be more difficult for us to uh, fully remove the dependence on external services. Um, but we will still be able to remove a lot of the boilerplate code that's used to set up you know, repositories and API clients. So. Uh, this effort is going to continue, and I'm hoping uh, with contributions from many folks, it will uh, go fast.
So questions, feedback, Grant. I'm gonna stop presenting at this point. Uh, okay, I'm gonna keep the recording going. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, gonna, can... I'm just gonna stop presenting because we're yeah. just gonna have a discussion at this point. Very cool. Um, so my question was, okay, I'm a, I'm a contributor, me, community, somebody else on the pulp team who hasn't, who's been kind of cheering us on from the sidelines, but hasn't been involved. How do I find out how to do the conversion you know, how do I approach a conversion? Is there anywhere to look or should I, are there PRs I should look at for examples? What's the right way for, for people to start getting involved who haven't already been doing this? Um, a good way to start is by looking at the existing tests. Um, there are a few tests that I feel like demonstrate um, the most, uh, such as the test download policy tests because that goes through a very robust workflow um and uh, the oh i forgot to mention another benefit of the web server fixtures um the web server fixtures allow us to uh, make server side assertions it's meaning uh, that uh. if we are trying to um determine did Pulp try to download files that it wasn't supposed to download because they were already in Pulp? We actually have tests uh, that make assertions on the server side. And those are the ACS tests, the alternate content sources. Mm -hmm. um, there are some really good examples of doing some uh, server side assertions there. Um, then uh, we actually even have a fixture that Jared wrote that simulates a bad connection where mm -hmm. corrupted uh, bits are delivered and how pulp handles a checksum not being correct. Um, and uh, that's another benefit of having uh, you know, a web server fixture. Mm -hmm. um, but to answer your question, Grant, the best way to get involved is by starting uh, to look at the existing tests and uh, seeing how you can apply those patterns to any future tests and um, any new tests. What I found uh, myself doing recently is just whenever fixing a bug is just adding some uh, extra assertions to existing tests. We have a lot of test coverage in pulp file and pulp yeah. core. And most of the time, I feel like we're going to be just adding some extra assertions to the tests. And as we add features, we're going to be adding new tests. But for bug fixes, I believe we're just adding new assertions to existing tests. Matthias. Yeah, um, I just want to add, I would make the um, PyTest documentation. Um, it's basically a required read if you want to start rewriting any of the yeah. tests. Thank that you, Matthias. Sense. Yes. And I, at least the the, the um, chapter about fixtures is very important. Yep. Can I? So I'm actually going to add. I'm going to kind of voluntold an unnamed person. One of you all that's 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 done this and is is embedded in it. Can we get like a a discourse thread or a blog post that says so? You want to start doing pie test? Read this document. Pay attention to that chapter. Look at these two things for examples. Just that you know four links as a starting point for people and then just that not not you know not a whole set of instructions but just here are the places to go because that way when i forget because i will because my brain is mush i'll be able to wait there was a discourse thread i can go look oh write these links and then uh keep going back and looking at the places i need to go to get my brain on track i i hate volunteering people no, no, i'm gonna fine. do it i will i will create such a thread outstanding thank you dennis i, I really appreciate that because i i this is a huge deal and I'd like to get involved more. But every time I think I should go do that, I end up looking at, I don't know what I'm doing and there's always something else to do and it's really mm -hmm. easy to procrastinate. So make it harder for me to procrastinate, please. Perfect. Deco. Deco. Hey guys, uh, I just want to ask, you know, like, more about a opinion here, you know, like makes sense to document the test infrastructure here, because I know it's not so common in other projects, you know, uh, to have this, you know, like 
it's, we usually found documentation about the project itself, about the code itself, but not about the testing infrastructure here, you know? So like, I'm seeing like, we're having like lots of fixtures. So I know that in the near future, we can get like lost around all those fixtures and all I can, what each one of, uh, of it do something or, you know, like- Yeah, um, so I don't the know. proper, yep. Thank you, Deco. Um, the proper way to document PyTest fixtures is with doc strings. Uh, because whenever you use PyTest as the command line uh, tool, uh, you can ask it for a list of fixtures. And if we properly put uh, doc strings in there, those doc strings actually come up as descriptions for all those. And um, we really do need to do a better job of uh, providing descriptive uh, doc strings, which we're not doing the best job of now. But I believe that's how we should document it, is with doc strings. Because then, as a developer, you can just ask for a list of fixtures and grep through it for whatever you're looking for, or whatever search tool you want to use. Um, <laughs> but yes, documenting the fixtures is very important. There are a lot of them now. And I believe another goal we have for the future that I did not mention in my slide is uh, converting more of the plugins into PyTest plugins. Thank you, Lubash, for the commands in the chat. Outstanding. When Dennis gets his thread up, Lubash, add those as a reply. <laughs> Other questions? All right, Dennis, are you good with me uh, stopping the recording? Yes. All righty. I can, Grant can't get the buttons. Here we go. Stopping recording.